fear, that crippling thing that lurks inside our minds that will stay if you don't throw it out. Kill that shit. Bless Thursday. You are now tuned in to apply where necessary. I am your host, Quay. This is episode 33. Let's get into it. Today's affirmation is coming directly from Apply Where Necessary. It is the first thing that I hit uh, opened when I was like, what's today's affirmation? And it is, I free myself of destructive fear and doubt. I am fearless. I didn't know what I wanted to talk about today. I almost didn't do it today because I was just like, you know, you're just not in the mood for certain things. And I'm just like, nah, but like I need to. And that's the first thing that I opened it up to. And that was kind of the theme of this week. Um, fear. I free myself of destructive thoughts and fear. It's simple. Fear is destructive. Fear is crippling. Fear is limiting. Fear is fear is scary. Fear is also safe. Fear is so many things. It's fear. Uh, when I googled the actual definition of fear, this is what comes up. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or a threat. Now, it's so many things, right? Um, I want to talk about what fear does to the body. So we have the actual definition. I said it's so many things. It saves us, it cripples us. Um, and when I say it cripples us, what fear does to the body, more so the mind, because it starts in the mind, it starts with our thoughts. And then, you know, we're having these thoughts and we've all had them. We may have had them today, we may have had them yesterday, we may have them right now. Um, but it starts with a thought. And I learned this year alone how important our mind is. Like more and more I learn every day, like just how powerful this, this, mind is and how it connects with our body and how it sends messages to our body and <laughs> but what you think is what is occurring to your brain your brain is another difference between real life or a thought it just knows that this is what what is being communicated to it so it prepares the body in in a way that you know matches that or you know um negates from whatever's going on uh, that's what the brain does so when we're thinking these thoughts of fear the brain literally thinks we're in fear of a fear of harmful situation or whatever fear induces and our body prepares us for these type of things so think just think of if you're thinking fear fear um fearful thoughts all the time your body's always in a on guard it is always trying to protect you against stuff so other things that may be positive can't come in or you know it's just fighting 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 no we don't want this and you're making a new genetic makeup in your body based off of your thoughts and what is fear it's 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 that it's like it's harm it's danger it's horror it's an alarm it's a panic and then you have results of things inside that stem from that panic that your body was in because of that thought that you allowed in your head. It limits our capacity to create. You know you're scared that someone may not like your song or may not like your story or your book or just what you have to say or just anything. You just like, no, I'm not gonna like it. And so you don't do it. And then you don't do it. You just always like, ah, oh, nothing's ever gonna work. And you just can't create. It limits your capacity to create, whether it's art or life it, it limits your capacity to create life. You may be so scared of what's going on in the world that you don't want to have kids and bring kids into it. And I under, I can understand that. But that's another, you know, symptom. That's another casualty that, you know, occurs from just fear. Um, it's just, it, it, it limits our, our ability to fulfill. 
it psychs the mind and just negating ways overall but also fear protects us from harm I don't, like I had another episode on fear and I had invited a friend um, who I asked what his definition of fear was this was in April 2020 like around the fourth episode I believe of Apply Where Necessary and I asked him after the definition of fear what he's afraid of and this is a man and I think it was really vulnerability and then the third question I asked is, what do you think I'm afraid of based off what you know of me? And, you know, it, it was really insightful and powerful. And I challenge everyone to, like, kind of ask the people, you know, around you close and kind of, you know, newfound closeness or whatever. Because people see different things in you based off also how they know you and how they observe you. Some people have, have had the ability to observe you for so long that um, they see deeper. But they also may just see the, they may miss certain things because they're so used to you as in whereas in new people they can see you know more surface level but um for fresher eyes also so i think it's a great challenge uh, to ask someone a friend a close one um but yeah fear fear also protects us from harm you know that's that's sometimes you gotta have it you know and we developed this fear feeling from Excuse me. Like back in the days, you know, our ancestors had to be afraid of snakes, be afraid of, you know, certain things that can harm and put us in danger, of course. Um, but we got to recognize when we're not in harm, we're not in danger, when we're the ones creating the harm and the danger in our heads that, you know, stop us from fulfilling certain things that should be fulfilled. Um, and it's funny, I was just researching more just about fear and like, you know, what is it? Like, it's just hearing other people's perspectives. And it was just like talking about how fear can be pleasure. It could become pleasure. Like, isn't it crazy? Like, how one, you could turn this thing into like something enjoyable, but like, it's still kind of there, but you're doing it for like an adrenaline rush or you're doing it because it's just something sparks in you, whether you make that intimate or within like, you know, just situations involving other people, like publicly going on a roller coaster, like I'm scared, but this feels crazy, like you know, or oh that hurts, but it also feels good, you kinky, like stuff like that. It's so interesting. Like fear is so much, it's so much, but also it's nothing at all. It can make you foggy. It could cloud your vision. It could just everything's a blur it could it could be like prison on earth fear what are you afraid of i've had conversations with people who are afraid of something that's just haunting them you know and and they're not fully allowing themselves to live and i don't know i'm here on this earth to to fully be able to live to to experience, discover, and experience what that feels like to me. So every day, I am really actively, actively tackling my fears. And it takes work. It's not a one, two, three, it's gone type of thing. It could take years to eliminate your fears, but you got to choose it every day. You have to eliminate your fears. Keep that alarm, keep your cautiousness up you know your guard up you know when you're dealing with the world to an extent you know just to protect yourself from you know actual harm but other than that we have to we have to cancel the subscription to fear it can't live here that was one of my uh, old episodes fear can't stay for dinner it can't live here you have to cancel that subscription you have to delete you know delete that membership you have to let it go it hurts fear hurts you can't hurt yourself you can't keep hurting yourself it's truly not worth it i was told personally one of my fears a couple years ago was um step it out of the background into the, the light, into the spotlight. And I was recalling that 
a couple days ago. And so I was just like, ah, like what did, cause I heard it multiple different, from multiple conversations and people in different ways, but it all was the same thing. It's just like, when are you gonna step into it? And I didn't realize that the lack of doing it was out of fear. You know, you think you're helping people and you're really being there for people and you know, I'm doing it, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. What are you doing it for? Are you doing it for to say you're doing it? Are you doing it for because you genuinely love it? Are you doing it because you want someone to be doing something to keep, for you to, to keep yourself in the background and the spotlight from you fully doing what you need to do? What are you doing it for? What are you helping for? Help, but understand what you're doing things for. You know, we have to get sure of ourselves, sure of our vision, sure of us. Like we just have to get sure. What are you doing this for? What are you waking up for? Purpose. Where are you going? Okay, you're helping these people, but what's the end goal? Or if it's not just the end goal, what's that next goal? What's that next destination? And then you can think of the next destination after that, but what is it for? You know, only you know. And if you don't know, you have to know. Fear is uncertainty. Fear is wanting to see proof of something before you even experience it to determine if you should do it. We can't, we can't have that. We're not psychics, not all of us at least. We have to just do it, we have to jump, we have to dive. We have to trust ourselves enough to know that I want this. And it's going to happen. And whatever comes my way, I'm going to tackle it. Fear is a lack of trust. Fear is a lack of faith. It's crippling, like I said. Because if we possess this, how are we ever going to get to the next steps, the next chapter, the next level, the next destination? with fear be aware be cautious be present though when you present I don't think we really are so, should have fear because the crippling fear because when we're present where we're we're able to see clearly right so when anything is in our harm's way and such you know that fear may you know come in for a second it shouldn't stay though that's the thing it shouldn't stay it should heighten something and alarm us and then we go into like problem solving mode you know whatever that looks like it looks different in any situation but fear isn't supposed to dwell it isn't supposed to be you know a guest in the hotel it's not supposed to have a seat at the table fear is not supposed to stay with us in this week sometimes we wake up and we choose it and I know because I've done it and I'm learning not to do it. And it truly isn't an easy thing, but you know how it makes you feel. You know. A lot of people say, I don't know what I want. You know. We know. You know what you want. And if you feel like you don't know what you want, that's because you're still foggy. You're foggy. Your sight sees and hears what everybody else wants for you that you may have lost sight of what you want but if you eliminate that and throw it out you know what you want and you know fear will not get you there i found myself listening to uh think and grow rich like an audible version and you know if you've ever read the book or heard about it the author napoleon hill um he studied andrew carnegie and then 500 other successful businessmen and women and there was a secret that they call it that he discovered based on everyone's success 
and he says he's i'm not going to tell you at the beginning i'm not going to tell you deliberately basically what the secret is it's for you to figure it out and find sight of it while you're reading this book and you may figure it out in this first chapter and it may take you the last but once you figure it out you'll never be the same you know but it's also up to you to you know choose to never be the same after you figure it out and that means you're ready if you change and shift that means you are ready to receive it and so i was listening and i think i immediately discovered it um and it pretty much is you, your success begins with an idea. And you mix that with the definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire. And you pretty much can't fail. And I mention this because the first half of that, it begins with an idea. A lot of what we, a lot of our, our business plans or the things that may shift our lives, it stems from an idea. And then that second half is mixed with definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire. Now, if you think about some of the people that are successful, they have some form of consistency. Persistence. That's why how I kind of translate it. Um, burning desire. Like, you know, whether you're thinking of an influencer, you know, they kept creating the content, they were consistent. Some of them you feel like don't deserve it, and it is what it is, what it is. But a lot of them kept going, kept going, kept going, and they got their visibility, right? Versus some people, I don't want that. They don't, they're not consistent, they're not posting, they're not keep going, they're not consuming themselves with it. And they don't have it, they don't get it. It starts with the idea, though, right? What is, what is my purpose? Some people are like, I want to be that. Or I want to do that, or I, or I see this issue, and this is how I'm going to solve it, and then they run with it. But the, the deal with those that don't run and those who do it, I think it's fear. And we can say a lack of resources, we could say you know the different zip codes, and that that all factors into it. But a lot of people that this guy mentions in the book came from nothing either. It's that burning desire. It's that you, I want it, and I'm saying this because I know I've teeter tired with a burning desire and the lack thereof. Like I've had so many ideas and a lot of them I acted on, you know, you know, business or concepts came out of it. And I seen like when I was really pressed, really pressed and I got it and I accomplished it. And then I also see when I'm comfortable and it's not burning, it's like, I don't wanna do that. Like I, I, I've experienced that. There's some ideas that I'm sitting with right now that may, you know, I'm not having a burning desire, but like I know I want it and each day I'm finding that desire, you know, but I can't blame the, the fact that they're not happening and I'm not reaping the results, the benefits of the results yet because it's the, the, the time, the hours have not been put into it, you know? So you got to really sit with yourself and, and ask yourself, do I deserve the success that I'm saying I deserve? Or also, what is stopping me from getting the success, to the success that I believe I deserve? And I believe nine times out of ten, it's a form of fear that is sitting inside of you that isn't getting you to where you want to be because you have an idea that something's going to happen or you don't deserve it or you don't have enough to fulfill it or you're not who you need to be to start to execute or whatever it is and that's all just fear talk. That idea that you can't, that you won't, that you don't deserve fear. Fear, fear. You gotta tell yourself, this is fear. This is a fear-induced thought. My idea will work if you allow it to work. And if you're persistent with it and it's just not working, you know, that's up to you to give up and shift to something else or refine it in a way that makes it like hit home. You know, if something keeps going, sometimes you got to keep going, but sometimes you got to adjust and elevate things. But we won't know until we try it. We won't know until we experience it. We won't know until we eliminate fear, destructive thoughts that negates what we really want, that limits us from our full capacity, ability, desire, purpose to fulfill
to create, to curate, to be, to do, to change situations, to experience life alone. You gotta kill that shit. It starts with an idea. Then you mix it with the definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire to fulfill. You gotta place yourself just in an overall mental state to create. To you gotta see it. You gotta see it. We gotta learn and figure out how to replace our negative thoughts we have to train our brain like i said we got to choose it every single day every time that fear comes and this is what i personally do i'm like nope nope it's not true this is not true or nah it didn't happen why am i thinking that you know obviously i think we should think of the extremes of two things they're really really great and then they're really crazy so that you can prepare yourself for the really crazy in case it happens and get yourself back towards the path of the really great nothing wrong with it but you can't let it sit or dwell or stay in you fear cannot stay fear shall not dwell you gotta eliminate it in order to get yourself to where you believe you deserve to be so it's a short and sweet episode on fear that crippling thing that lurks inside our minds that will stay if you don't throw it out. Kill that shit.